Hi there! You are watching a video of above ground storage tanks in industrial plants. The shell or wall of a storage tank is prone to buckling, mainly when the tank is empty or is near of being empty. To avoid this, stiffening rings are placed on the tank shell, starting from the top, less resistant, and going down, placing intermediate rings if necessary. The reasons to use outer stiffening rings on tank shells are the following. To ensure the shell to roof joint, to avoid deformations caused mainly by overpressure internal vacuum. To accomplish this, a top angle is placed. On the other hand, to avoid deformation of the tank shell caused by wind pressure and external pressure acting on the tank shell. If this is the case, stiffening rings are used. Stiffening rings to counteract the action of the wind are known as wind girders. In non-atmospheric tanks, that is, isolated from the atmosphere, an internal pressure can be developed inside the tank. Among other things, this load tries to separate the roof from the tank shell. At the same time, the internal pressure creates a force that tries to uplift the tank. In this case, a top angle to counteract this inner force must be placed. As indicated in section 5159 of the code, the shell of the roof storage tanks must be provided with a top angle where the size will not be smaller than those indicated in the table showed on the screen. As per Annex F of the API 650 code, the profile used to support this type of roofs must have a configuration and cross-section according to figure F2 of the code and reproduce on the screen. The configurations allowed for this type of roof must follow details A to I. The cross section of the joint must comply with the minimum requirements indicated in the code. On the other hand, for tanks with supported roof, the top angle shall be according to the figure F2 of the codes, details A to D, and the joint will be considered as frangible. Same as in the previous case, the cross-sectional area of the top angle for tanks with supported roofs must comply with minimum requirements established by the code. One of the most important aspects to consider in the design of the tank shell is the action of the wind pressure. This tends to buckle the tank shell. The stiffening of the tank shell must be analyzed, carried out, in two different sections of the tank. Top weight girder, stiffening ring to prevent the upper part of the tank shell from buckling. Intermediate wind girder, stiffening rings supporting the wind pressure in the intermediate parts of the tank shell. In addition to the top wind girder, the top angle is also located in the upper part of the tank. When possible, it is a good practice to design a unique ring that meets both functions. The function of these rings is to stiffen the upper part of the last shell course, preventing buckling and undesired deformations during assembly, operation and maintenance of the tank. The top wind girder is of vital importance in tanks with open roof to stiffen the upper part of the tank shell. This needs to be done to withstand the actions of the wind. The minimum size of the profiles to be used is described in section 593 of the code. 
The required minimum section modulus for the top wind girder must be calculated following the equation indicated in section 596 of the code and reproduced on the screen, where Z is the required section modulus, D is the diameter of the tank, H2 is the height of the tank shell, including any space for the floating roof if applicable, and V is the design wind speed. Same as for the upper part of the tank, intermediate regions of the tank shell are subject to buckling due to wind at the time of construction, operation and maintenance. To prevent effects that may damage the intermediate parts of the tank shell, stiffen rings are used. This procedure should be applied to tanks with and without roof. The API 650 code in section 597 establishes a procedure to check whether intermediate wind girders are required. The method consists first in calculating the required vertical space between rings according to the following, where H1 is the vertical distance required between intermediate rings and the top wind girder. T is the nominal thickness of the thinnest shell course. D is the nominal diameter of the tank. And V is the designed wind speed. The second step is to obtain the transformed height of the tank shell. The vast majority of storage tanks are designed with shells of variable thicknesses thicker courses at the bottom and thinner shear courses at the top. To evaluate the effects of wind on the tank shell, it is necessary to unify the thicknesses of the shell courses and find the new total height of the tank, that is, the transposed height of the tank shell. It is obtained as shown on the screen, where WTR is a transposed width of each shell course, W is the current width of each shell course, T uniform is the as-built thickness of the thinnest shell course, and T actual is the as-built thickness of each shell course. If the total transposed height, the sum of the transposed shell courses, is greater than H1 calculated earlier, at least one intermediate ring is required. To determine the required cross-section of intermediate profile to be used, the same procedure used for the top wind girder must be followed. If one intermediate ring is required, it should be placed half the total transposed height if half of the transposed total height, this is the sum of all the transposed shell courses, is greater than the required height H1 calculated earlier, a second stiffening ring is required. Rings can be fabricated from standard profiles, commercial plates, or a combination of these two options. Stiffening rings must not retain water to prevent corrosion problems. When possible, it is recommended that ring welds do not overlap with shell welds.